Hi, welcome back to our channel. Uh, this part of the video is servicing the hedge trimmer. Right, here you go. Firstly, this is what you need. You'll need a rag uh, for any dirt, uh, some sort of antibacterial cleaner, a brush, not a wire brush, ideally just more of a broom style brush, uh, some grease uh, for when we regrease this, uh, a rounded file, a flat file, and the Allen key that would have come with this when you bought it. Okay. Oh, and we want to keep the pot because the bolts can go in there. Right, I've more or less cleaned it up, but I'll just give you a quick sort of demonstration. Right, so to clean it, spray it there, give it a quick brush up and down. Now, the idea with this is not only does it look better, it also, if you're doing trees and shrubs around your own garden or your garden are doing private jobs for other people, um, plants, trees, shrubs and stuff can get diseases the same as humans. So, if you keep your equipment clean and do it regularly, then you will not be spreading diseases around other people's gardens or your own garden. So anyway, right? Basically this is More or less clean already. Okay, I'll we'll flip it over. All right, it never looks brand new. I'll bring it closer to the camera so you can see what it sort of looks like after you've been using it a while. All right, so if I bring it close, right, that's that's fairly clean. The, the metal sort of stains, so that's the back bit. Right, um, I'll just click the battery in again. Right, so here. Right, now if you listen to it, it's. This is what it sounds like when it starts needing a little bit of oil. Alright, so I'll rev it up. Right, it's clicking a bit. Right, now importantly, before you start doing anything with it, take the battery out so you can't accidentally start it. Right, so the battery's out again. Right, now, with this as well to make it easier, unclip from the engine unit. And now we turn it upside down on our table. Right. And this Allen key that you would have got when you bought this unit, right, you need to undo all these bolts. So I'll bring it close to the camera again. Right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Now, when we're undoing them, obviously it's easier to put it on the table first. Remember, if you want to loosen them off, loosey lefty, righty tighty. So turn it to the left, it will loosen. All right? It's going to take a little while to do all of them. So what we do now is we we pause and then we jump cut for when it's undone, and then I'll show you how to grease it. bolts out. Right, only thing to make sure, basically on this bolt there's a little bit here which basically stops it from coming loose. So just make sure if all your bolts have come off that all of these are still on the bolts. Just a little sort of split circle. Alright, so anyway we'll put these back in here. Always important to have a nice big pot for any bolts you take off so they don't just get lost. Okay, so that's now off. Right, next thing we're going to do carefully, twist that a little bit, we're going to take this bit off. We have to be careful, you always take them off carefully and gradually, right? because once this is off, it's very easy for the components to start falling out and about, and if you lose your bearings, then you're in trouble. Right. Now, we've got an old t-shirt here, so we can get rid of some of the older grease. It's quite black and oily, right, so we want to take some of that off. All right, always worth using an old T-shirt if you can. There's no point buying anything brand new just to wreck. So uh, if you've got an old T-shirt or an old pair of jeans or or uh, yeah something that's been hanging around and you're planning on throwing it away anyway, all right. So use that for sort of wiping down your grease. 
Right. Anyway, that's uh, that's most of the grease that's easy to get to about. Right. Next thing, grab hold of your grease. You might have a pot of it and you just have to scrape it in, but I quite like these tubes. They're easy to get in. They are more expensive, but it's quite easy just to squeeze it in. Especially if you're out and about and you haven't got a lot of stuff and you just want to make sure that you're filling it. It's nice and it's nice and easy to get them in and you don't make a lot of mess. So I fill it up and then I try and angle it so it's better for the camera. You see, it's um it's properly going in there, there's a nice amount there. Right. And um we fill it up here as well. There's no point using a tiny bit of grease. You might as well fill it right up and if there's a tiny little overspill, we've got a, a rag there so we can wipe it down afterwards. Right. So I just realised I haven't actually done the bottom of that one yet, so I'm going to wipe out any dirt first, clear that out. Okay. Right. As you can see, the uh, spent grease is quite dirty and grubby. Right, so. Just going to use an end of a file because there's a little bit of leaves and stuff just caught in the very end. Just flick them off. So we're not washing it down today. We're, we're just going to do a quick fix, just for general easy maintenance. All right. Uh, you've got your hole here to line up. You've got the hole here to line up. There's a little metal plate, so obviously you have to make sure that that's not covering either of the holes, so it's still in sort of the same position. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to wipe the gloves off again. Obviously the gloves are good for keeping grease off your hands. Also the blade's quite sharp, so keeping gloves on means you're not going to cut your fingers. Alright, so we're putting back on again. If you look closely there's a tiny bit of excess grease there, but apart from there there's no other grease. Right, so next part we will put some bolts on. All right, we'll get them all in position. Now when you're putting the bolts on, don't do the first one up as tight as you can. We do them so they're all fairly tight and then you go around at the end and you tighten them all up at the end so they're fully tight. Okay, again, make sure it's got the split circle on there. So it basically, presses up against it so it, can, it stops the, um, the machine uh, from shaking the, the bolt loose so it can't fall off. So always important to check the semicircles on there. These are fairly new so they're holding on well but sometimes an older machine they can get looser as the years go by. Um, right, so that's the first one done. Try and wiggle that around pretty quick. Okay, it's now all attached. Uh, right, so the next part, I'll just show you um, with it plugged into the, well, not plugged in, slotted into the machine. Okay, so we slide into the machine, just so you can hear the noise difference. Right. And we'll hold it up again, and then we'll rev it. Right, back for the final part. Um, basically, this doesn't really need sharpening at the moment, but just to sort of show a quick example of sharpening. First thing, I like to make sure it's not attached to the tool. So there's no way this blade can possibly work, because obviously you don't want to stick your fingers in there and cut yourself. Obviously, another reason why the gloves are on. Right, now in terms of sharpening it, um, what I normally do, I leave the whole thing together because it puts better pressure on it. Um, I hold it close to the tables I'm going, 
Um, but obviously if you don't want to hold it or you haven't got a lot of grip strength and you've got a clamp, then you can just clamp it on. Right? And then with the flat one, you can go along the edge. Always go away from the top of the blade down to the bottom, like that. This one isn't too bad, so it doesn't really need that much. It's just to sort of set an example. So again, that's looking pretty sharp, and then just down again with the other one. So. And then if you want to sort of do the centre bit, get a rounded file, same sort of thing, going down, not, not back and forth, just down. Okay, so that's looking nice and clean. And then on that one, down again. Obviously you can do all the ones all the way along on this side, but because you're going to have to then flip it over and do that bit, and you're going to have to do this side, so you're going to have to do this side, this side, then that side at the bottom and this side at the bottom, so each bit here is four different files, you might want to just take it to uh, your local um, sort of centre that sells these appliances and get them to sharpen it. And just because they don't necessarily sell this particular hedge trimmer, if you're sort of um, just a domestic sort of gardener who just wants it sharpened every couple of years, it's probably worth just taking there and getting them to do this bit because it's quite time consuming and if you haven't got the files as well. Alright, so that's that's basically it for all the maintenance you should need to do on this hedge trimmer. Um, that, that's it. If you um, basically, the most important thing is to grease it and if it starts making a lot of noise, you know it needs greasing. So take it apart, get some grease, put some grease in there and do it because if you don't keep this regularly greased, your, it will go dry, your bearings will start rubbing and you'll end up with a tool that needs new bearings and it will be not binnable but for the price and effort of fixing it you might as well buy yourself a new one uh, so it's always worth making sure if it starts making noise get the grease, get, get your allen key, get your gloves on uh, and your rag, clean it out, put it back together again it's nice and simple and it will save your you basically mean your tool will last for years and years to come. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching your video. Uh, any comments, anything that you want to know more about it, please leave a comment below and um, uh, subscribe for more content. Thank you. Bye-bye.